First this evening, a debate about how Christian women should put themselves together ended abruptly as one of the participants was kicked out of the auditorium. Usher him out. Usher him out. In 2018, a very humiliating debate happened between Pastor Gino Jennings and a popular Jamaican musician, Mr. Vegas. The cause of this debate was Pastor Gino Jennings saying women are not supposed to wear jewelry and makeup and when they do so, they look like whores. A Christian woman, skin tight jeans, that look like a whore. Gino Jennings expressed his belief that women should not adorn themselves with jewelry or makeup, stating that when women do so, they resemble whores. His statement was not only blunt, but also deeply offensive to many. Among the many who were angered by Jennings' comments was Clifford Smith, better known by his stage name, Mr. Vegas. As a prominent figure in the Jamaican music industry and an outspoken advocate for women's rights, Mr. Vegas felt compelled to respond. He took to social media to condemn Jennings' remarks, accusing the pastor of promoting harmful and outdated views on women's appearance. Mr. Vegas argued that a woman's worth and character should not be judged based on her outward appearance. He emphasized that women have the right to express themselves through fashion, jewelry, and makeup without being subjected to derogatory labels or judgment. During a pivotal moment at a holy convention led by Pastor Gino Jennings, the atmosphere became charged when the Jamaican musician Mr. Vegas was brought on stage. Tensions had been brewing for some time, with both men engaging in heated exchanges online, but this face-to-face -face confrontation took the debate to a new level. As Mr. Vegas took the stage, the debate quickly intensified. His frustration was palpable as he challenged Jennings' views, particularly those that had sparked outrage among his fans and the wider community. The discussion became even more heated when Mr. Vegas, in an attempt to substantiate his claims, called for the media team to play recordings of their previous online debates. He insisted that these clips, which included controversial statements made by Jennings about women and their appearance, would provide the necessary context and evidence for his arguments. Play the tape. Play the tape. What Come are on, you ashamed Steve. of? Where what are you ashamed of? Play the Steve tape. Too. Amen. Come on, Steve. Play Bye. the tape. Play the tape. Gino Jennings refused for the tapes to be played and told Mr. Vegas that he should go and sit down, and if he insisted on the tapes he should go to the internet they are there. Vegas angrily responds that he can't go, that he is already here, and will take the police to get him out. I'm already here. Sit him. I'm down. already here. Brother Mike. Brother I'm already Mike here. Call off. the police if you gotta move me. Mr. Vegas refused to sit down and it took the securities around to make sure he left the stage. Gino Jennings was seen telling the available securities to usher him out of the stage with immediate effect. Usher him out. Usher him out. Gino Jennings, in one of his service, reveals because of the debate event he had to go to the police station to clear things up and also put things straight. The captain was very polite. He said, Pastor Dennis, do you mind coming down to the police station? I said, not at all. He said, well, when can you come? I said, right now. So me and a van load of brothers, we went to the police station. And, <laughs> and Mr. Vegas and those that was with them pulled up. And Mr. Vegas lied on some of the brothers of our security team. He said they had guns. None of our security carry guns. If it was automatically recorded on YouTube. So while the brother was in the police station, he pulled it up and saw everything. And when the officer seen that the statements that Vegas was making was not true, the officer said to our brothers, and to them, well, the church can press charges against you. The debate between Pastor Gino Jennings and Mr. Vegas should have been conducted with a strong adherence to moral principles and church ethics. Unfortunately, the physical altercation and the involvement of law enforcement do not reflect the core values of Christianity, which emphasize peace, love, and respect for others. The incident undermines the very teachings that both parties claim to represent. It's important to note that Mr. Vegas is not alone in his views. 
Many individuals who share his perspective have openly challenged Pastor Gino Jennings' teachings, particularly his stance on women wearing jewelry and makeup, which he controversially referred to as making them look like whores. These critics argue that Christianity is fundamentally about love, compassion, and acceptance, not about spreading messages that could be interpreted as hateful or disrespectful. The broader Christian community is diverse, with varying interpretations of biblical teachings. While some align with Pastor Jennings' strict and literal interpretation, others, like Mr. Vegas and his supporters, advocate for a more inclusive and loving approach. They believe that the essence of Christianity lies in embracing others with kindness, regardless of differences in belief or practice. He should be praying for those women. He should be having con um, compassion towards those women. He should be assigning women in his church to gather group meetings to go out and minister to these women. He should not be chastising these women. He should not be belittling these women. And as a matter of fact, I want to make it clear. Not because a woman wear lipstick and long nails and nail polish don't mean that she's a whore. And yes, God, God can call people to deliver messages who are wearing red lipstick and red nail polish or colored lipstick or colored nail polish and tight jeans to win souls for him and to minister to those with a broken hearts and to those who have lost their way he's a real misogynist him that man you can see that he his per women to him mm -hmm. is supposed to be procreate and serve him that's the only two purposes he's he's very much into separation mm. um the church him he, the, the congregation women uh, there are no women leaders and like there are no women deacons, women don't hold a leadership position in his church. Several individuals have publicly expressed their opposition to Pastor Gino Jennings' teachings on modesty. It's not just limited to a few voices, many others have also shared their perspectives, challenging his views on this topic. In the following clips, you'll see additional individuals who have weighed in, providing their own insights and criticisms. Their viewpoints add to the growing conversation around Jennings' teachings, highlighting the diversity of opinions on modesty and the role it plays in modern religious life. Here's a selection of clips featuring some of these voices. I mean, you can like go in there like and then excluded people because they're wearing lipstick. I mean, this is crazy. I'm like, this is this is nuts. First of all, not only does he sound like there's like a talk box in his throat but no not only does he sound like satan is in him doesn't it not say in the bible come as you are matthew chapter 11 verse 28 come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest number two i don't understand how um lipstick or rings or ankle chains anything like that would be a cause of concern these women that he's calling whores because they wear lipstick and red nail polish and tight jeans he should be ministering to those women looking like this you know looking like they're coming straight from the nightclub into church don't be outraged ladies go fix yourselves up cover yourselves up Gino I agree with you 100 percent because how a lot of these women dress these days, man, I really don't like. In the aftermath of the debate and Pastor Gino Jennings' statements, there were several broader discussions and conversations within various communities. Many feminists and advocates for gender equality argued that women should have the freedom to make choices about their appearance without facing judgment or condemnation. They viewed Jennings' remarks as a prime example of how society often polices women's bodies and choices. There are some men Pastor Jennings and his minister here, for example, who figure that the godliness and how godliness should be exemplified, I think, is most um, appropriately defined in a woman's dress. Mm -hmm. And so of all, with all the things happening in the world and all of the particular things that a church should concern itself with, if it says it is it is uh, concerned with with how people are. It, it is a woman's dress, I think. It trivializes, I think, what, what Christianity says it is about. I think um, it also, you know, there's this phenomena called speaking from the God, with the God view, where men tend to speak as if when they speak, they're speaking 
before God, and they've done it for a long time. In response to the wave of criticism, particularly from women, Pastor Gino Jennings once again addressed the topic of modesty during one of his church services. Determined to reinforce his stance, Jennings took a more hands-on approach, presenting tangible examples to illustrate his points. He brought out specific clothing samples that he believes have had a detrimental effect on the spiritual atmosphere within the church. Through these demonstrations, Jennings sought to underscore the impact that certain styles of dress have on the congregation, aiming to drive home his message about the importance of modesty in maintaining the sanctity of the church environment. His efforts reflect his unwavering commitment to his teachings, despite the ongoing backlash. You know why some of you upset? Because this look like your mama. Yeah. This look like your daughter. Yeah. This look like your wife. Yeah. This look like your second wife. Yeah. This look like the pastor wife. Yeah. And that's why you upset with me. Yeah. Because we call a spade a spade. This is not the look of a Christian woman. The Bible said that the women adorn themselves how? In modest apparel. Come here, Sister Bailey. This is modest. Modest apparel. Now, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with it? How in the world you expect for a man to come at church and think about Jesus and you looking like a stripper? Bible says, let the women that women adorn themselves how? in modest apparel. Modest. Modest. Respectable. The controversy surrounding Pastor Jennings' teaching stems from his unyielding stance on what constitutes modest attire. He has frequently criticized modern fashion trends, particularly those embraced by women, as being immodest and incompatible with Christian values. Jennings' sermons often include explicit directives about what women should and should not wear, emphasizing long skirts, high necklines, and the avoidance of makeup and jewelry. According to Jennings, these outward expressions are not merely fashion choices, but are indicative of a person's spiritual state. Many individuals, especially women, have pushed back against Jennings' views, arguing that his teachings are not only restrictive, but also patriarchal. Critics argue that by focusing so heavily on women's clothing, Jennings perpetuates a culture of judgment and control, where women's bodies are scrutinized and their worth is tied to their appearance. This perspective is particularly concerning in a modern context where many are advocating for women's rights, including the right to express themselves freely without being judged based on their attire. Moreover, critics argue that Jennings' teachings fail to account for the diversity of cultural expressions of modesty. What is considered modest in one culture may differ significantly from another, and a one-size-fits-all approach to modesty can be both exclusionary and insensitive to cultural differences. For example, in some African cultures, traditional attire that might be considered revealing by Western standards is seen as a respectable and modest way of dressing. By imposing a rigid standard of modesty, Jennings' teachings may alienate those who do not conform to his specific cultural and religious framework. Despite the backlash, Pastor Jennings has remained steadfast in his beliefs. He has consistently defended his teachings on modesty, arguing that they are rooted in scripture and are essential for maintaining the spiritual integrity of the church. In response to the criticism, Jennings took a proactive approach by addressing the issue directly in one of his church services. During this service, he aimed to reinforce his message by providing tangible examples of clothing that he believes are contributing to the decline in the church's spiritual health. Jennings presented specific clothing samples during his sermon, using them as visual aids to illustrate what he perceived as immodesty. He argued that certain styles of dress, particularly those that are revealing or form-fitting, are not appropriate for Christian women and that they detract from the sanctity of the church environment. According to Jennings, such attire sends the wrong message, both to the congregation and to the broader community, and undermines the church's mission to promote holiness and godliness. In his sermon, Jennings emphasized that modesty is not just about outward appearance but is reflective of one's inner spiritual state. He argued that when Christians, particularly women, dress modestly, they are demonstrating their commitment to living a life that honors God. 
Conversely, when they dress in ways that are perceived as immodest, Jennings believes that it reveals a lack of spiritual discipline and a disregard for biblical teachings. A broader perspective, modesty in Christian teachings. The issue of modesty is not unique to Pastor Gino Jennings, it is a topic that has been debated within Christian circles for centuries. The Bible contains several passages that address modesty, particularly in the New Testament. For instance, 1 Timothy 2, 9-10 states, I also want the women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, adorning themselves, not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds, appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Similarly, 1 Peter 3, 3 for advises, your beauty should not come from outward adornments, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewellery or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. These passages have been interpreted in various ways by different Christian denominations and communities. Some, like Jennings, take a literal approach, advocating for conservative dress codes and a rejection of any form of adornment that could be considered vain or ostentatious. Others adopt a more flexible interpretation, emphasizing the importance of the heart and intentions behind one's appearance rather than adhering to strict external rules. One of the challenges in discussing modesty is that it is inherently subjective. What one person considers modest, another may view as immodest, and these perceptions are often influenced by cultural, social, and personal factors. The Church has a significant role to play in promoting a balanced and holistic understanding of modesty. This involves teaching the biblical principles of modesty in a way that is both clear and compassionate, helping believers to see how modesty relates to their overall spiritual walk. It also means providing support and guidance for those who may be struggling with issues related to body image, self-esteem, or cultural pressures. In addition to teaching, the church can model modesty by creating an environment where all individuals feel welcome and accepted, regardless of their appearance. This can be done by emphasizing the importance of inner beauty and character over outward appearance and by celebrating the diversity of ways in which modesty can be expressed. By doing so, the church can help to counteract the negative messages that are often promoted by society and instead encourage believers to find their worth and identity in Christ. Furthermore, the church can play a role in advocating for modesty in the broader culture. This might involve speaking out against harmful media portrayals of women, promoting positive body image, and supporting initiatives that encourage respectful and dignified treatment of all individuals. By engaging with these issues in a thoughtful and proactive way, the Church can help to shape a culture that values modesty not just as a superficial standard, but as a reflection of deeper spiritual and moral values. The debate surrounding Pastor Gino Jennings' teachings on modesty serves as a reminder of the complexities involved in interpreting and applying biblical principles in today's world, while it is essential. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll stay updated with our latest content and never miss out on the topics that interest you. We appreciate your support and look forward to bringing you more engaging and informative videos. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you're the first to know when we upload new content. Your likes, Comments and subscriptions help us continue to create the content you love, so thank you for being part of our community.